Hi, my name is Sam Cusimano, and welcome to this MIDI Sprout tutorial. Today, we will begin assembling our MIDI Sprout kit. I suggest that you organize all of your components so you can have easy access as we go through each of the steps. You should download the MIDI Sprout kit instruction manual from our support website at support.midisprout.com or forum.midisprout.com. Let's go to our first step with the solderless breadboard. The solderless breadboard makes prototyping very easy. It consists of a series of columns A, B, C, D, and E, which are electrically connected in individual rows. Each of the rows, 1 through 30, are electrically separated. This allows multiple connections to be made between the points in each row. A division down the center of the uh, breadboard separates columns F, G, H, I, and J, which are themselves connected. This gives us two panels, left and right, of electrically connected rows. Vertically, you can see on each side a plus in red and a minus in blue. These indicate vertical columns of electrical connections. These are called buses, and we're going to use this to control and send positive voltage and ground signal to both sides of the breadboard. For our first step, we want to insert our 555 timer IC, which is a small 8-pin chip. You'll see a very small dot in the top left-hand corner of the IC. This indicates pin 1. The pins are labeled going counterclockwise, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then across the bottom, 5, 6, 7, 8, back around the top, counterclockwise. We're going to insert the 555 timer in the bottom row of the circuit board. Here we're in rows 27, 28, 29, and 30. Next, we want to connect a jumper wire to pin 1. Pin 1 is ground on the 555 timer. Now our jumper wires can be any color, it doesn't really matter, and uh, you will make an electrical connection between row 27 and over here the negative side or the blue bus bar Here I'm going to move this jumper wire over to column A, still in row 27. For step 4, we're going to add our timing capacitor, which is the tiny blue 0 .0042 microfaraday capacitor. Insert this between rows 27 and 28, which are pins 1 and 2 of the 555 timer. He's a little tiny guy. It's kind of hard to see. Next, we're going to insert our uh, decoupling capacitor, which is our one microfaraday capacitor. It comes in a cardboard with tape package. Peel off the tape, and this is really where having a set of wire cutters can come in handy. I like to trim off the bottom, which makes the capacitor fit closer to the breadboard. I'm going to bend out the legs slightly in order to have the right spacing. This capacitor has to span across the divide between the left and the right side of the board. 
here in row 27. We're going to insert this on columns D and column G between the left and the right side. And so this really is spanning across pins 1 and 8 of the 555 timer. For step 6, we'll insert the electrolytic decoupling capacitor in parallel with the one microfaraday capacitor we just inserted. Notice the silver stripe with the negative sign on one side of the electrolytic capacitor. That's going to go towards the negative side or ground. Pin 1 on the 555 is ground. So we're going to have the negative side go towards pin 1 and the positive side come over here to column H. Again, all in row 27. Next, we're going to want to add an LED in order to indicate the output from the galvanometer. This is where a CR2032 battery comes in handy. The flat side of the CR2032 battery is the positive side, and the small button side, or rough side, is the negative. If you pick up one of the LEDs, you'll notice they are all clear translucent. It's hard to tell what color they are. The longer leg of the LED is the positive leg, and the shorter leg is the negative. By attaching your button battery to the positive leg and the negative leg, you can see the color that the LED is, in this case, green. I want to add a red LED, since we have two of them, to the galvanometer. So let's try this one. Again, the longer leg going to positive and the shorter going to negative. There we go. This one's a red LED. This technique only works with button batteries, like watch batteries or these CR2032s. Don't just directly connect an LED to a 9-volt battery. It'll burn right out. Here we want to attach our red LED between pin 3 of the 555 timer, or in our case row 29. Have the positive leg, or the longer leg, bend out. Insert the longer leg into row 29, and the shorter leg into the negative or ground bus here indicated by the blue line. Next we're going to add another jumper wire. This is going to be to go between the trigger pin, pin 2, and the threshold pin. Here we're going between row 28 and row 29 over here on the right hand side of the board column G. Next we're going to add two positive voltage jumpers to each side of the board. I like to use red wires when I'm indicating positive voltage or sometimes even orange wires. It doesn't really matter what color your wires are when you do jumpers but it does help to make it consistent when you're looking at where your power wires lead. Here I'm going to take one jumper between row 30 on the left hand side, uh, column D, and I'm going to put it over here to the right positive bus, again indicated by a red vertical line. Now on the other side of the breadboard, I'm going to take another orange jumper wire and go to pin 8 of the 555 timer. Here it is, row 27. I'm going to do it in column J. I'm going to take that to the identical, right, positive red stripe going down the right-hand side. This is going to be the positive bus on the right-hand side of our breadboard. Next, we're going to connect one of our resistors, the 100K resistor. The 100K resistor is the single resistor, 
and you can identify it by the brown, black, and yellow stripe on the inside of the resistor. These are tiny little resistors. Again, when you're working with these components on a breadboard, sometimes it's convenient to trim the resistors or the leads uh, in order to fit better on the breadboard. I'm just going to bend the leads of the resistor in order to make this jumping connection. We're going to go between row 28 and the positive bus. This essentially connects pin 7 of the 555 timer through a 100K resistor to the positive bus. Next, we're going to connect our mono input jack. Now, for many of the kits, I've soldered on a two-pin male header, which makes it really easy to plug into the breadboard. This isn't a hard thing to add if you have two pins of header and just a soldering iron. I've bent the leads together so it makes it easier to meet up in the small profile of a uh, the pin headers, take your component and plug it into rows 28 and 29 at the bottom of the breadboard. Now, it's a tight little fit, but it should go in just right. This is the probe jack which we're going to use to connect to our electrodes, which will attach to the leaves of plants. Next, we're going to be attaching our positive and ground buses between the left and right hand side of the circuit boards. I'm going to use a black jumper wire here. I'm going to connect between the negative or blue vertical bus on the left hand side, and I'm going to jumper that over to the right hand side in that same blue negative bus. This connects those two ground ends together. Similarly, I'm going to take a red jumper wire and I'm going to go between the red positive bus on the left hand side over to the red positive bus on the right hand side. This makes it convenient to attach either positive voltage or ground to a component on either side of the breadboard. Next, we're ready to test our galvanometer circuit. Pull out your battery box and insert three AA batteries. The MIDI Sprout kit does not come with AA batteries. You're going to have to provide your own. Attach the negative side of the battery to the spring end of the battery pack. Insert all three batteries. Always use fresh batteries with any kind of electronic device and always use batteries of the same type. You'll see the two wires on the battery pack have been stripped slightly in order to reveal uh, a slightly soldered tip. This should assist in connecting to your breadboards. Insert the positive red wire into the positive vertical jumper. Now when we connect the negative to ground, we will power the circuit. The red LED should light brightly. Tune in to our next episode where we'll attach our galvanometer circuit to a 328 chip containing the MIDI Sprout code and output to a MIDI jack. Make sure you unplug the power before you move on to the next step. Thank you for joining.